Hey guys, it's Toby Mathis here, and it's that time of year again when we have to worry about extensions, tax filings, when is, what, how much do I have to pay, when is it due, all that fun stuff. And so we're going to lump this into two broad categories. We're going to call it filings and payments, and we're going to dive into it. So let's, let's dive right on in. All right. So our first category, we're going to call it filing and your tax filing is due for individual for 2023. It's April 15th, and that falls on a Monday this year. So it really is the 15th. Sometimes it falls on a weekend, it'll be the next weekday. But for this year, it's really the 15th. How about payments? Well, your payments of taxes due are also on April 15th for your 2023 taxes. Now, Whenever we talk about payments, I want to be looking at something called penalties and interest. We're always looking at whether or not you're going to be subject to a penalty because you didn't pay something as you went or when it's due. And so we're going to talk about two types of penalties, the failure to pay and a failure to file. So if you don't owe anything because you paid, like maybe you had withholdings here, I'm just going to draw a line down the middle. If you don't owe anything, then you're never worried about penalties or interest because you don't owe anything. You have no tax liability. So even if you fail to file and if you have no tax liability, there's not going to be a penalty on that. But if you owe money and you don't file on time, then you could be looking at, I think it's 5% a month, up to 25% of that tax liability. It can get pretty nasty. So we want to make sure that we are filing our tax return when it's due, or in the case of an individual, we get an automatic six month, automatic six month extension. So our real tax, our real due date is October 15th. That's when your filing is due. We don't have an extension on our payments. So we have to make sure that we're paying our taxes. Now there's an easy way to avoid penalties at, even on your uh, tax payments. And that is to pay uh, if, First one is if you are less than $1,000 equals no penalties. Notice I'm just saying penalties. If you paid 90% of your 2023 taxes, no penalties, or, and it's the lesser of these, 100% of your 2022 taxes taxes owed not taxes paid so if you owed $20,000 in 2022 and you owed $30,000 of taxes uh or in in 2023 we don't know that yet cuz we haven't done your taxes uh in order to pay no penalty you would have to have done 100% of that 20,000 so even if you didn't pay 90% or $27,000 of the $30,000 owed, you're still caught. It's the lesser of those two. Now there's a little asterisk here. If you have income that is greater than, let me do greater than $150,000, and this is AGI, then it is 110%. So you can get rid of uh, penalties by meeting one of these tests. It's really two tests, and it just depends on whether you're under $150,000 of adjusted gross income or over $150,000. Now, that's just penalties. There's still interest if you don't make that payment by April 15th. So I'm just going to tell folks, you're crazy if you have a business, small business, or if you have K-1s coming in, 1099s, if you have different types of income or you might restate your financials, like you're looking, like you may be looking at your financials over the summer uh, for your business. If that's you, you should be filing an extension. If you have real estate 
and you're not sure whether you should be accelerating depreciation, for example, or doing a cost segregation study on some of your real estate to offset some taxes, you should file an extension because you can do those things all the way up until you file your tax return, including extensions. So for example, as a real estate investor, I may have taxes that I think I'm going to go ahead and pay on my 2023 tax return. I may have income that I'm gonna recognize on my 2023 that I could offset by doing a cost segregation study. But I don't know if I want to yet. I want to wait until far into 2024 to make that decision because I wanna see how I'm doing this year, what my cash position is, and maybe I need, maybe I'm hurting for cash and what I really need is to not pay so much in tax or maybe I wanna get a refund, a bigger refund. Then I might file a, uh, a 3115 and do a change of accounting method on my real estate and create extra deduction that gives me that extra uh, refund back or causes me to pay less in tax and I'm able to pay less. Uh, another one is if you have a 401k or you do a SEP IRA, you can be funding those from the business portion, 25% of your pay, um, you can contribute into that 401k or you could do a defined benefit plan all the way up until that business files its return plus an extension. If you're sole proprietor, that's you all the way up till October 15th. If you're in S Corp, it's up until September 15th. But if you file your return, you closed yourself off. Now, of course, you would never file your personal return if you haven't filed your business return because the business return is what would give you the K-1 if it was an S-Corp. So you wouldn't do that without that K-1. But you'd want to make sure that you're giving yourself that time. I deal with this with clients all the time. Unless you are getting a refund on your personal taxes and you want that money quick and you're like maybe your W-2 and you could file your return uh, or unless you are being required to file your return for a loan, for example, or to get qualified for a mortgage, there, it just doesn't make sense to file your taxes on April 15th. So I would generally advise people do the October 15th, give yourself more time because K-1s get restated all the time out of syndications and partnerships. We see uh, uh, 1099s and other tax forms changed by the individual providing them. Sometimes they restate, sometimes they made mistakes, sometimes they didn't have complete books and records and they, they wanted to get a K-1 out or they wanted to get a 1099 out or something out um, on time and they knew that they were probably gonna have to change it and then they did. You don't wanna be in a situation where you have to file an amended return because somebody else restated it. So it makes sense to file that extension. Now, if you do that, keep in mind that you have to have made your payment by April 15th. Well, if I haven't done my tax return, I may have a big question as to what is my 2023 tax bill, right? And so even though I can avoid the penalties by paying 100% of, of the previous year, or 110% if I'm over $150,000, I still have interest I have to worry about. And so if I want to just be safe, if you are one of those individuals, and a lot of us are, where you have quarterly taxes, then here's when they, here's when they actually come due. You have January through March is the first quarter, and that due date is actually April, 15th. Then here, let me give you the rest because it, it helps to know that the quarters aren't just three months. It's April and May is the second quarter. And then you have, uh, what is it? June through August yeah, as the third. And you have September through December as the fourth. But we have this first quarter due date for our 2024. So let's just say 2024. What I'll do is I'll take that first quarter and I'll apply it to 2023 with my extension. In other words, I made an extra payment. If I've been paying quarterly, I'm paying a fifth quarterly payment just to make sure that I don't have any interest. 
and I'll make sure that I have no taxes due. Now, what if I don't owe that tax on my 2023, or excuse me, on my 2023 taxes? Yeah. What if I don't owe that? Then you would just apply that. That gets applied to your first quarter of 2024. You made a tax payment now, and that overage automatically goes into quarter one of your 2024. So you had that, like, let's say that you were a paying, let's say you make, you pay $30,000 a year in taxes. And so you divide that up, divide that by four, which equals $7,500. So your first quarter payment, because we don't know what your taxes are yet. So we don't know what you should be paying necessarily in 2024. So we're gonna base it off of what we did in 2023. We're just gonna pay another quarterly payment but we're gonna apply it with our extension. Um, if you don't understand it, your accountant will. And what we're saying basically is make that payment, but don't just call it your first quarter, call it your extension so it's applied towards 2023 first, because believe it or not, if you made your first quarter 2024 payment and you still owed money on your 2023, they're gonna charge you interest on that unpayment, even though you're saying, but I made the payment, no. You got to, you know, we got to take care of 2023 first uh, before we do our 2024. If you make payments in 2024 and apply them to 2024, they don't automatically go back, but they do automatically go forward. So what we want to do is make sure that we are making that extension payment instead of as a first quarter payment, we make it as a 2023 tax bill payment. And that way we can avoid this guy right here. We can make sure that we don't have penalties and we can make sure that we don't have interest. So there you go. You've got it in a nutshell. There's two distinct things. What are my filing deadlines? And what are my tax deadlines? They're very different. They sometimes share a date, but they don't share the same characteristics. And it makes sense to file that extension. It makes sense to make sure that you're following in one of these three criteria. Obviously, it's probably two. It's the 50, it's this. 90% of your taxes due uh, in any given year or 100% or 110%, depending on your AGI of the previous year, that keeps the penalties at bay and then making sure that you make your payments uh, and you make uh, whatever you think that tax payment is gonna be by April 15th uh, to make sure that you don't have any interest as well. But two distinct things, now you know about them.